Hello and welcome to today's video. In today's video we are going to be talking about how to support and resistance. So this is going to be part one in my beginner's guide to cryptocurrency series. Um, you guys do not know me, this is my first video so to introduce myself my name is Donovan Jolly. I've been trading crypto since uh, summer of 2016. Around that time Bitcoin was probably worth three to four hundred dollars in that area. Um, when I first got into it I had a heck of a time finding quality information, uh, whether it was on YouTube or wherever, because there wasn't a lot of people getting inside of crypto at the time. So a lot of it was just my own learning hands-on, uh, trial and error. And so I really wanted to make this a series to help these new guys getting inside of crypto um, and give them some quality information that they can look at to help them better understand the markets so they don't have to make quite as many mistakes as I did. So. Why support and resistance? Um, support and resistance is basic and it's pretty easy to learn. Fundamentals are really important. Um, any professional sports player, any professional doing anything, it doesn't have to be sports, they will always tell you that they wouldn't be in the position they were if they wouldn't have practiced the fundamentals early on. Fundamentals might not seem complicated, but in the long run, these professional traders are generally sticking to more basic uh, ideas and principles when it comes to their trading. Because when you overcomplicate trading, it's going to mess you up every single time. You got to stick to what you know and trade that. Um, number two, everyone uses it, even the pros. Um, I should change that too, especially the pros. Like I said, um, if you're a profitable trader, you're going to be using these techniques. It's the fundamentals of trading. Support and resistance is a form of an indicator. However, it's just one of the very basic principles that people often overlook. Um, it's a universal strategy that you can apply anywhere, meaning it's going to work on any time frame, whether it's 10-minute candlesticks, whether it's 4-hour candlesticks, even up to the daily end of the weekly time frames, you're going to be able to find these zones where support and resistance has been helpful. Okay, what you're going to learn, number one, what is support and resistance, number two, how it applies to trading, number three, how you can use it in your trading plan, and number four, how I use support and resistance. It's always good to get somebody's alternative perspective on things. I know whenever I would first get into this, I'd watch people's videos and they wouldn't really explain how they would do it. They would just kind of talk about the basic principles. And for me, I learn better when somebody can explain why they do it, how they do it, etc. So here's some examples of what we're going to be talking about. In today's video, we're going to be talking about horizontal support and resistance. So it's everything's going to be flat, just like this chart. I know that this one's a little bit more diagonal, but just understand in today's video, it will be horizontal support and resistance. Okay, so I'm at my screen. Now, we're going to get right into the lesson plan. So the first question I have is, what is support? Support is an area where there becomes a lot of value or buy pressure that is holding the market up. Now, the way I look for support is areas that have the most um, touches on that support line. And that's because the more touches you have, the more accurate that data is. That's showing that there's more um, action going on there compared to if we came up here and marked the all-time high. If we've only seen this market cycle, we don't know necessarily. There hasn't been a ton of action right there, right? So to start, where would be the uh, best area that has the most price data? Well, for me, it would be down here. Now keep in mind, you there's not a true line that exists. However, you can draw one and you can find where price reacts to it the most and then that'll give you a good idea overall of where that horizontal support does lie. So if we come here, we draw this, we can see price reacts to it once, twice, three times, four times, and then five times, clear over here. So that's five different areas where um, sellers have pushed price down and then it's bounced from that um, specific zone. So this is what I would label as a strong support area. How about we look at resistance? So the first question, what is resistance? And resistance is an area where the sellers 
far outweigh the buyers. So the supply is way higher than the demand in a specific area. So if we come over here, we will mark it right here. We have this area that we can see uh, price action and movement between the bulls and the bears. And then right at the top of basically right over where we drew our support. And now right in here, we're starting to see this big battle breakout between the bulls and the bears. So I'll mark this with blue. So we have price uh, sells down to here. We have a bounce, and now we get rejected from right there, that high, this high, this high. And then price does manage to break out of this. We can see this, if we zoom in, zoom in real close, we can see this big wick, and that's almost like a test wick. The market is testing that area to see if it's going to be strong enough and if there's enough buyers to break out of that resistance zone. So if we come in here, we did see that price did break from that. And we came in here and landed and we had this big bullpen candle. However, price then broke through. The sellers became too great. There wasn't enough buy support in that area. So the price came back down and then we get rejected once more right here off that line. Now if we come over here, this is what I would consider kind of the stalemate between the bulls and the bears. Right here you have lots of action. We have this low, this high, this low, this high, and then back and forth, back and forth. We have this great big break right here, but then the sellers just come in and fight it back down inside of this little channel. And then you get to here, and price is really just oscillating in the middle. It's basically just kind of stagnated. There isn't much highs or lows. It's just straight across. And then you have one final low over here. And so that's kind of what you'll see when you have this big rally. The bulls uh, had made this big rally, lots of buy pressure, and then the sellers became too great, and then they started knocking the price back down. And then we have this retracement. And then you get to this area, and this becomes the area where there's high demand. Over here, people weren't buying, and that's why the sellers stacked up and knocked the price down, is because there wasn't enough buyers coming into the market. So over here, prices have then diminished to this very low point to where now you're starting to see uh, a lot of demand. People are saying, okay, I can, I can see myself buying higher quantities at this cheaper price because it's a better return for myself. It's a better investment overall. And so you start to see this battle coming in. The sellers are trying to push the price down from this uh, previous all-time high and they're in control of this market until about here. And then you're starting to see a strong battle. Prices aren't really going higher. They're not really going lower. And that's the buyers and sellers trying to come in and figure out who's going to assert market dominance. And then right here you have this big break. This is where I would consider strong bullish uh, arguments is because you have this price way low. The sellers are starting to die out. They're not being able to push it any lower. And then you have this huge bull break come in over here. And that is basically the smart money coming in and buying the retrace when it's low and cheap, they understand what's going to give them the best risk to reward ratio and the best returns for this new upcoming market cycle that's to come that they speculate. And so this is why we have this big bull break here is because the smart money's coming in and they're buying lots and lots and lots at these cheap prices. And that's going to cause the uh, price to pump. I don't have the volume indicator on right now, but if we did, I'm sure we'd see an increase in volume, and that shows that there's starting to become more of a bullish sentiment in the market. And so we come in here, sellers are still great. We come on, sell, uh, fill some stops, and then we fall. Okay. And now, before we get into the next market cycle, I want to draw some more zones where price is reacted. So we have strong resistance right here. Okay, we can see price fall. Let me get the all-time high in there real quick too while we're at it. And I'm actually, I'm not going to do it right there. I'm going to count the wicks. Some traders will count wicks. Some traders do not trade with wicks. They'll just count candle bodies. Um, for me personally, I feel like there's a time and a place to include both. Um, if there's an area where there's multiple wicks touching it, you can say, okay, that's an area where there is enough interest in data for me to consider that that's a solid area. Uh, to put my probabilities in. So basically we have these areas here and we'll even count right there. Okay. And then one final one right here. Now 
You don't want to get too crazy when you're drawing your support and your resistance lines because it can get really messy. If you have too many lines in there, you won't even be able to see what's going on. Like I said in the intro, don't try and overcomplicate things. This is just a fundamental practice. Keep it small, and you're just looking for the most areas of price history. Okay, so if we come in here, we can see made the all time high up in this area. We have resistance areas here and here. Price couldn't uh, break above that. We have support zones in here and here. And then we have support zone here, resistance zone here. And the, th the cool thing about support and resistance is they're kind of interchangeable. Uh, previous support, what, what once was previous support can then act as pre uh, resistance in the future as we continue to watch the price and the market form uh, its market structure. So as we can see here, this area was once support for this bigger market, but then right in here you can see it act as resistance. There's sell support in this area and it knocks the price back down. So if we come over here, we're then going to analyze our previous support and resistance zone and apply them to the next upcoming market cycle to follow. Okay, so if we come over here, we'll end it right there. And then we're going to draw our zones and we'll just carry them over. Now keep in mind, not all of the resistance and support zones are going to react to the next one. Um, however, it is good to include them to see whether they will or not. So if we come over here, and we'll start, we'll start down lower so you can see a little bit better. We can see we had this last low, and this was kind of like the last sell-off of this market cycle starting into the new one. And so if you come in here, we can see a market blue. Okay, so if we can look right here, we're seeing red and green candles kind of just sideways movement because this spot has a strong resistance zone and it's reacting to we're trying to break through that. The bulls are trying to push through that. And there's also sellers that are fighting to keep the prices down. And so you'll have this sideways choppy movement until finally there's a decisive breach, whether it's on the downside or the upside. In this case, this is a bull market, so we have a break on the upside. And then you're just going to count the resistance zones. We have another one right here, and then we see that choppy movement coming again. Bulls and bears fighting and fighting. And then, like I said, this is a bullish market. We have a decisive breach. Now, this was a resistance zone right here. However, the second time around, prices didn't really even need to react to it. It just broke through and went clear up to the all-time highs. Okay, This is why it's important to pay attention to the previous support and resistance is because you can come in here and place some buy entries and you can get filled. So like right here, we knew that this was a key uh, zone of resistance in this case it broke and then it became support and we have this huge wick come all the way down and if we count that's a 52 percent swing in that one move and that's just from knowing where the previous well where the previous support in this case it was previous resistance it then broke so it became support and if we had buy orders set there because we knew that that was a specific zone of interest we could have got a 50 percent swing in just one day and so we come here, we don't start seeing any real fighting until about this second resistance to the top near the all time high, but prices are pretty seamlessly breaking through. Now you're starting to see a pretty big battle. Right here, we're seeing lots of movement. And that's because this is the all time high. You gotta keep in mind, think about how many people the dumb money FOMO'd at the top and then bought and then held. And if they didn't capitulate at the very bottom of this market cycle and they kept holding, they're going to get to the point where it hits all-time highs and then they're going to say, okay, I'm, break, I'm broke even. I, if it goes lower again, I don't want to have to sit here and hold this anymore. I'm selling my position. So you have these big bag holders that are starting to dump on the market up here. And at the same time as that, you're having the people that bought the smart money that bought down here they're starting to take profits into this into this rally and so this is why you're having a lot of a, a fight between bulls and the bears is because from both sides you're getting sell pressure from the people that bought at the bottom and from the people that have been holding since they foam out at the top and then once that settles we have another uh, rally and then this is the hype and this is FOMO stage just similar to how we went to there and then we rally so this is basically uh, what you need to know for support and resistance. I think I covered most of it. Um, always remember, look specifically for the places that have the most 
um, price data or the most points where price has reacted to a certain point. In this case, we had this bottom. Keep in mind, prices aren't always going to react the most perfect ways. Like I said, it's an invisible barrier, so you're just kind of uh, guesstimating where it might be. So you might you might have a rally and you set a buy order at your given uh, support zone. Say so you set it right here and it wicks down and you just don't get quite filled. And that's fine. That's going to happen to you all the time. However, just knowing this simple strategy is going to benefit you far more often than it's not. So keep in mind that when you are trading with support and resistance. Um, thank you so much for watching. Um, this is going to be part one to the beginner cryptocurrency series. In the next video, I'm going to cover uh, diagonal support and resistance. But this was just kind of an introduction. Like I said, stick to the fundamentals so you don't get stuck over complicating things and trying to make things just far more difficult than it needs to be. So thank you very much. If you like this video and you found it helpful, please leave a comment, uh, like and subscribe. Um, so yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video.